uh, Andre Eisenstadt lectures. Andre Eisenstadt was a businessman who had a big uh, interest in mathematics and who uh, donated uh, serious funds to the University of Montreal. And in fact, the building is named for him. And also our most prestigious uh, lectures at the CRM are named uh, for him. And uh, this lecture started in 1970. And along the years, we had uh, uh, quite a few uh, prestigious uh, lecturers. The last one, I think a few uh, weeks ago, was uh, Duncan Halde. And uh, it's uh, a pleasure today to, uh, 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 in fact, I, I know it's not the first lecture of uh, Professor Inoue, yeah, but this one is a general uh, audience lecture. So this uh, lecture, And Andre Eisenstadt lectures are uh, generally three talks, one for a more general audience. And uh, this is when the CRM director shows up in most cases. And um, in this case, I'm a symplectic topologist. So it's appropriate that maybe I show just up just at the general lecture. In any case, I'm very happy to uh, pass the microphone to Sylvie who will uh, do the production of the So anyway, we are really happy to listen to your second lecture after the one of yesterday afternoon, and we're going to learn about the algebra massé. Thank you for introduction. Uh, you. It's my great pleasure to give a uh, lecture, three lectures this week at uh, CRM. So uh, I came from Japan, so Chiba is uh, next to Tokyo. And so um, Mainly, I'm studying uh, discrete integral systems, and I'm interested in a related uh, topic in mathematics, too. And recently, I'm interested in applications of cluster algebra, uh, of course, to integral systems. Um, but uh, not only that, I'm interested in uh, several topics in combinatorics and geometry and so on related to cluster algebras. So today, I'd like to introduce such uh, background or related topics um, to cluster algebra. And this is my plan. Uh, first, I introduce uh, some overview. Maybe many of you uh, attended uh, yesterday's my talk, so maybe uh, some uh, slides are overlapped. So uh, I give um, some introduction, and next I um, will review some basics of cluster algebras. So I will give uh, uh, some definition and uh, uh, important theorem in cluster algebras. After that, I uh, explain two aspects of cluster algebra and totally positive matrices and a uh, punctual surface. So they are very different topics, but we have a common structure in Kriba. So uh, this is the overview. Um, so we have a cluster algebra here introduced by Fomi and Zervinsky around 2000. So in the background, uh, from my point of view, uh, there are two important things. One is uh, totally positive matrices, and one is a uh, punctured, punctured surface. And the totally positive matrices are in, uh, mainly in algebra. So it is naturally related to root system or the algebra or moreover, it's related to quantum group, the presentation theory of quantum group. On the other hand, in geometrical side, uh, once we uh, triangulate the punctual surface, uh, we can go to uh, the Heitner theory of uh, two-dimensional hyperbolic space. And uh, moreover, uh, it is uh, described as the so uh, real space. Um, but if you if we com uh, complex if you take a complex version, we can go to three D hyperbolic geometry too. So this is another branch. And on the other hand, our uh, cluster algebra has a categorization called the cluster category, and it is uh, related to the Kriva representation closely. And on the other hand, uh, there is a quantization um, of cluster algebra introduced by Hock and Goncher. It is uh, also an important uh, topic and it is related to uh, hyperbolic geometry too. And uh, as an application, uh, it is related to integrable system and many topics in mathematical physics. 
So I, um, my main uh, subject is here. So I'm interested in uh, all things. So this is the background. Then uh, today I explain this and this topics in this order. So uh, let's go to the part of basic of cluster algebra. So cluster algebra is defined by forming Derevinsky and by in the following uh, way. So let I be the finite set from um, integer from one to n, and we fix a seed. It is a triple of uh, n by n skew symmetric matrix B, integral matrix B, uh, what is called an exchange matrix. And uh, we also use uh, n tuple of algebraically independent variables called cluster variables or x variables. And we have another n tuple of variables called coefficients or y variables. So uh, we fix um, this uh, information first, and we define a algebraic operation called mutation. So for k, uh, k is element in this set i, uh, we define uh, algebraic transformation from a seed to another seed. So I will show the uh, precise definition in the next slide. And before that, uh, I I explain the definition of cluster algebra. So um, let uh, assign this initial seed sigma to this vertex T. And in this case, we have N different mutations. So we get a uh, different N C. And it is easy to see that uh, the mutation is involution. So we apply a uh, mutation to generate the next generate uh, the next stage, and so in this way uh, we continue to mutate, mutate, and we get invariant tree. In general, then, uh, so by starting with the initial C, so sigma t on this vertex, uh, we get uh, many many seeds on. N variant on the vertices of n variant three T n, so the cluster algebra is defined by um, exchange matrix B and uh, cluster variables two cluster variables, what is called cluster X, uh, as a Z algebra generated by all X variables appearing in this uh, n variant three. This is the definition. Then, so in general, uh, we have an infinite number of um, x variables, but in some case, it can be finite. Then, uh, this is a definition of mutation. So uh, this is a, a little complicated operation, but uh, I would say that uh, this is a, a transformation for skew symmetric matrix B, and we again get the skew symmetric matrix. Then this is a kind of rational transformation for x and y variables. Then I will show um, a simple example soon. And I'd like to remark that uh, if ij entry of the matrix C is zero, then the corresponding mutation, mu i and mu j are commutative. And moreover, um, skew symmetric matrix B is are related to a uh, quiver without one loop and two circles. And the relation is given by this formula. So ij entry bij of b is the number of arrows from i to j uh, in the quiver, vertices of i to j in the quiver, minus uh, the number of opposite uh, arrows. So it means that uh, so two cycle um, for two cycles so bij should be zero. So in this way we cancel the two arrows in opposite direction. So this is an example, and actually it is same as yesterday uh, example. So this is a case that vertex the number of vertex is four. So the exchange matrix is four by four matrix. 
then uh, this is a river and x and y variables. So uh, let's uh, try to mutate at vertex one. Then we get this river uh, in the following way. The previous um, how the formula for mutation is interpreted in the following way. So first we reverse all vertices uh, related to vertex one. So these two arrows uh, becomes these two. And next uh, for, for a pair such that uh, one is one arrow is coming to vertex one and one is outgoing from one. For such a pair, uh, we add this arrow to make oriented triangle like this. And uh, we do this way for all uh, pairs related to vertex one. In this case, we have only a one pair. So we finish this operation and we uh, add remaining untouched arrows. So this is the result of the mutation. And X and Y variables are changed like this. And next, uh, by applying mutation at vertex two, we get this cleaver. So in this stage, uh, we do the same operation for the cleaver for the vertex two. And in this case, uh, so first we reverse the uh, direction of arrows like this, related to vertex two like this. And uh, in this case, we have two uh, pairs one is coming to two and the right are going from two. We have two pairs. So we add two arrows from four to three and four to one. And by um, adding uh, untouched arrows, this and this, and they are canceled. And this is a result of cleaver. So actually on um, this cleaver um, is called a uh, thinking cleaver for uh, D4 type. So, um, this this uh, this kind of quiver is very important. For x and y variables, uh, the further complicated operation occurs, and uh, we have this kind of things. So this is the operation. Then uh, this is a fundamental theorem for the cluster algebra, approved by Foreman Zerbinski. So first one is that uh, all x variables obtained from the initial seed in this case, sigma t, um, by applying many, many mutations are in the Roland polynomial ring uh, with the coefficient z uh, generated by uh, initial x variables, xi and xi index. So this is called Roland property. So the reason it is highly non-trivial is uh, uh, com comes from the definition of mutation. So we always have, so, always have denominator in the definition of mutation. So if uh, some, some step later, um, so some xk uh, becomes, uh, how to say, rational function of the initial variables, but not Roland monomial. And then uh, to get uh, Roland property there, so some non-trivial um, calculation should occur. So in this way, uh, this first claim is highly non-trivial. And the second claim is that uh, the cluster algebra uh, is finite, namely the number of X variables is finite as I uh, explained in the definition of cluster algebra, if and only if an uh, exchange matrix is mutation equivalent to uh, the that denotes a dinking cleaver of A or D or E types. So mutation equivalent means that uh, after a finite number of mutation and the dinking, uh, it becomes a dinking cleaver, namely uh, dinking cleaver is obtained as a, so directed as the lack of uh, AD type dinking diet. So uh, this is a two, these two, a very uh, fundamental, important theorem in cluster algebra. So in the case that uh, cluster algebra is finite, uh, X, uh, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence uh, between finite number of X variables and negative root and positive root set of uh, corresponding D algebra. So I will show uh, the example soon. 
So this is really a finite set. And I'd like to remark that, uh, so after uh, the proof of Foreman Zervinsky, uh, in the skew symmetric case, like now, uh, so the first claim of the theorem um, becomes more stronger. So all x variables um, in the Laurent polynomial ring of the initial cluster variables, but the coefficient is always positive. It is now blue. Moreover, a cluster algebra is defined also for skew symmetrizable uh, exchange matrix. So uh, it can be generalized to skew, symmet skew, skew symmetrizable matrix. So, but for today's talk, uh, we mainly consider skew symmetry case uh, for simplicity. So in this case, so skew symmetry case, the relation um, between exchange matrix and cleaver are very simple. So I take uh, this case today. So uh, this is an example of finite uh, cluster algebra. So this is two by two exchange matrix corresponding to A2 cleaver. So this is the initial seed. And after a uh, mutation mu1 at vertex one, we get this one. So this minus b means that uh, really a minus b. So in terms of cleaver, it is a A2, sorry, A2 cleaver with uh, the arrow of opposite direction. So we get on uh, this one. And because uh, mutation is involutive, so we go to the next stage by a prime mutation mu2, and we get this one. And by a prime mu1, we get this one. So actually, at this step, a non-trivial um, calculation of numerator and denominator occurs. So today, I don't explain this calculation, but if you are interested in, please try by yourself. It is very educative step to understand uh, low lamp property, actually. Then uh, by applying mu2 and mu1 further, we get this one. So this uh, seed is almost the same as the initial one. So actually, by interchanging uh, x, so two and one, so you get this one. So it means that if we continue to mutate, Further, new two, one, two, one, two, and then we get really the original. So, this is a finite case, and cluster algebra is uh, given by this formula in this case. So, it is uh, the algebra generated by uh, these variables, colors in red. And the correspondence with uh, root is easily seen. So. They, they are a, a negative simple root and the positive root of an A2 type. And correspondence is, so for positive root, uh, by looking at the denominator of these last three cluster variables, you see that the denominator is uh, corresponding. So multiplicative version appears in denominator of cluster variables. And for uh, the exception is these two initial uh, X variables, they are related to negative uh, simple roots. This is a correspondence. Uh, I'd like to mention a little bit more about a notion in cluster algebra. So we are interested in a mutation sequence which preserves the cleaver to, uh, for application. Then, uh, namely, uh, this is a, a sequence of several mutations. And we also use a uh, element in uh, the permutation group on the um, vertex set, namely uh, aside from uh, the finite set we first fixed. Then uh, it this acts on the seed in this way. It is normal way. And for a given exchange matrix or cleaver uh, B or QB, uh, we are interested in the composition of the sequence mutation and uh, this the and the element in the symmetry group permutation group sigma and such that um, it doesn't change the cleaver but it may change uh, the cluster variables and y variables so we are interested in such uh, element 
And uh, actually, such elements um, constitute the group called the cluster modular group. So for a given uh, exchange matrix B, uh, this group is defined in this way. So this is a set of the sequence of mutation uh, which preserves the B modulo, uh, the trivial element. Trivial means uh, it doesn't change the seed itself. So let's see an example. So in the uh, previous example, a simplest example, so this and these elements in it are the non-trivial element in cluster modular group. And this is a trivial element in the group. Uh, if we apply mu one, we get this one. And by interchanging one and uh, two, uh, minus B becomes B. But uh, X and Y values are non-trivially uh, changed. So this is an element in uh, mod cluster modular group. Moreover, composition of mu one and mu two is again uh, belongs to the cluster modular group. Moreover, uh, by applying five mutations and interchanging one and two, uh, this uh, seed is, uh, becomes the initial one. So it means that uh, this belongs to the, so this is the identity in the group. So in this way, uh, we can find uh, some special element in sequence of mutation. So why uh, we are interested in such a thing is related to the Poisson structure on Y variables. So it was uh, introduced by these people uh, in the following way. So if we have an exchange matrix B and its uh, Poisson uh, structure is given by this formula, and this is compatible with mutation actually. So if we have an element, um, element in the cluster modular group gamma, then it induces the uh, rational uh, transformation on the uh, rational functional field generated by Y variables, preserving the Poisson structure. So uh, it is very nice uh, to find uh, this thing to study, for example, uh, in the world system. So Poisson structure is automatically followed, so it might be very nice. And actually, uh, this Poisson structure can be quantized, so in a naive way. And at the same time, we have to modify the root of mutation a little bit, but it is done by Fock and Gondry. So uh, this is the basic uh, in cluster uh, algebra and mutation. Is there any question? So let's go ahead. So by the way, uh, if you attended yesterday's my talk, I hope you remember this fever, so M periodic fever on the cylinder. So when M is the coxeter number, the period of this fever is the coxeter number H of the real algebra J, then uh, this fever is related to uh, totally positive matrices and higher Tychner theory in both sides. And for example, uh, in the case Q4A3, uh, this is the uh, Cleaver. So we have A3 Dinkin diagram here, Dinkin cleaver, and we connect uh, four copies of this Dinkin cleaver in this direction. And you should identify uh, this top and bottom. So this is the definition of this cleaver. So if you cut uh, this cleaver into two, uh, almost same cleavers, then uh, from now you will find uh, this cleaver will appear. And actually this uh, dashed arrow uh, has weight half. And if you uh, grew uh, two uh, such dashed arrows, uh, then you get the uh, original uh, arrow. So this operation from right to the left is called amalgamation. And sometimes uh, this appears in uh, cluster story. So uh, let's go to the main topics. So uh, the first one is about totally positive matrices. So the total positivity for a square matrix is def defined in the following way. So A belongs to GL n plus one uh, is totally positive uh, is if and only if all minors of A are positive. 
So this is the definition. And these uh, totally positive mat matrices are uh, has, uh, was studied uh, long, long, long time for a long time uh, because of um, how to say it has many background, not only in mathematics but also in physics and combinatorics. So and so the important property uh, properties are that follows. So A is totally positive if and only if it's Gauss decomposition. So, uh, so this is lower half di um, diagonal part and up upper triangle part. So this decomposition or this decomposition, each element in this three uh, is totally positive. So uh, it is uh, it is shown. And for the second plane, so sorry, uh, the diagonal part. So B is very simple. So we should focus on upper triangle or lower tri triangle part. So today we focus on upper triangle part. And this is written as a product of uh, this elementary matrix EIT. So uh, this is at diagonal, it has one. And on um, one upper uh, part, I only I, I plus one entry it has a real number t. This is, today I call this elementary matrix. Then, um, actually all element in this uh, set is written as a product of this elementary matrix by deferring t and i. And third, so totally positive uh, subset of upper triangle matrices are uh, isomorphic to the in all uh, real numbers, this space. And NO is a number of uh, upper triangle part of this matrix. So this is very basic, but important result. The question is as follows. So the map from uh, N to positive, positive real number, sorry. So uh, R2 NO to, uh, totally positive upper triangle is easy because we just uh, take a product of these matrices. It's easy, but the inverse of this map uh, seems to be difficult. And the problem is how to get this inverse. So this is the, uh, how to say, the point of cluster algebra actually. And so let's see the n equal two case. So in n equal two case, uh, we have this kind of element uh, says that uh, the minor of this two by two is positive. Then uh, it is written as a product of three elementary matrices. So E1, T1, E2, T2, E1, T3, and we get this one. Then uh, actually uh, T1, T2, T3 uh, gives this X, and this uh, is totally positive from the beginning uh, when we take a uh, positive numbers as t. And, but uh, in this coordinate, we should assign a uh, condition that the minor of this part is positive. So this is the reason. So this t gives a good coordinate in this case. And the inverse is easily calculated, of course, in this case. And the result is this. Um, take a little bit different view to this expression. So this inverse expression. So, oh, I'm sorry. So we define for x for this x, we define this matrix y. Uh, this is a very non-trivial definition. But anyway, so we take a subset of one, two, three, and uh, depending on this subset j, we define a, a minor of matrix y in this way. So. This is, so if you have J, then a uh, row uh, is from one to the size of J and the column uh, depends on J. So in this way, we define uh, many minors and actually the previous inverse map from T to X uh, is written in this way. So this is the ratio of minors. 
So in the case of n is two, uh, it might be very just a complicated one, but in general, uh, it is very uh, good way. So uh, actually, uh, there is a way to uh, get a graphical description of this uh, formula given by Bernstein formula, basically, um, in 1996. Actually, this paper is very important. So uh, they introduced uh, the wiring diagram like this. So depending on the description uh, in terms of elementary matrix. So if you have uh, E1, T1, then uh, you cross the second and the third wires. I'm sorry that uh, the numbering is opposite, but uh, it, it will be easier for some reason. So at the crossing, we assign this positive number T1. So in the same way, if you have E2, T2, you cross the first and second wires and assign T2 at the vertex and so on. So if you uh, arrange uh, these wires by following this description, after that, uh, you number the regions. So you start empty. Uh, if you uh, go across, you pass the third wire, then this region uh, becomes three. And the further you go across the wire, second wire, so this region is numbered as two, three, and so on. So after this numbering, uh, you can uh, see that uh, if the configuration around the vertex T, uh, vertex T is A, B, C, D like this, and the expression of T in terms of these minors are given by the ratio of the minor of A, C uh, over B, D. So actually, uh, the, because uh, the determinant of this matrix is one, so minor of the one to three is one, and we assume that minor of empty is one. So by using uh, this assumption, you find, for example, for T3, T3, it is uh, minus one, two, and empty is numerator, and in denominator minus one, two, and so it fits this condition. So actually it is called chamber ansatz uh, introduced in this paper. Uh, and uh, it is very nice description. So let's continue. So actually this three by three uh, upper triangle matrix has another expression as a product of elementary sorry, uh, matrix. Yes. So it was E1, E2, E1, but now we have E2, E1, E2 with different uh, quantity of T. So we have two wiring diagrams uh, to describe uh, the same matrix X. Then, uh, but we require that uh, the product, two products are the same. So it gives uh, the rational transformation for T like this. And it actually it is birational transformation. And it can be shown, uh, shown that uh, this, uh, transformation is equivalent to the relation among a minors called Kruka relation. So this is the relation. So uh, now we can go to a cluster thing. So we can draw a dual quiver to this wiring diagram by using some way. So for example, to this uh, diagram, uh, for each uh, region, for each chamber, uh, except for the top and bottom one, we assign uh, vertices of the quiver like this, so five vertices. And uh, we connect these vertices uh, by some way. So lastly, we connect uh, the neighboring region from left to right, and we connect uh, the, among two, two lines, we connect uh, in this way. And we are uh, assigning a uh, dashed arrow at the, so infinite region in the right, rightmost and leftmost. 
So in this way, we get this cleaver from this wiring diagram. On the other hand, uh, we get this cleaver from the right wiring diagram. Then uh, we can see that these two cleavers are related by a mutation at this vertex. So actually, if you mutate this cleaver at, at this vertex, uh, you get this cleaver. And if you move this vertex to, to up, so you get this one. So this is the uh, where the mutation, the relation of mutation and the change of the expression of the matrix appears. So actually the mutation of X variables associated with this mutation is given by this formula. So in terms of cluster algebra, X2 prime is this one. And so because of the this identification, we identify X2 prime as X13, then uh, this formula is nothing but the political relation. So in this case, we can say that the minors of matrix Y uh, is X variables. Ah, yes, I omitted that. Yeah, uh, but anyhow, so, uh, let's try. So, so let's let's try to uh, explain uh, this part. So, uh, so we mutate at the vertex two. So we uh, reverse this arrow and this arrow to this one, and we add uh, additional arrow so of weight one from one two to one. So actually, there was uh, uh, an arrow from one to one, two of weight half, half weight. So, so the resulted one is uh, one minus half is half. So we have a uh, arrow of weight half from one to, to one. So this way, uh, the root of mutation is uh, a little bit generalized by Fock and Gonjo to deal with half weight. So, uh, and, and this uh, cleaver is obtained. So actually, uh, this is a n equal two case, but for general n, we can do the same game. So in general, so first we fix a uh, reduced expression of the longest element in the wild group WAN. And so by following this expression, uh, we can make the product of elementary matrices uh, from E I1, T1, 2, E, I, N, O, to T, N, O, like this. And we can draw a wiring diagram. And uh, as a dual one, we get the cleaver in the same way. And uh, actually, the change of reduced expression occurs uh, in this case as a, a braid relation. So if for every braid relation, uh, we uh, so every braid relation is interpreted as a mutation of CRIPA, and we get uh, the parallel story in cluster setting and in the wiring diagrams. Then uh, in, when we choose the expression in this way, so WO is S1, S2, 1, and 3, 2, 1. And in this way, uh, we get uh, this CRIPA. So this is the same uh, CRIPA. Uh, as before by cutting uh, the cyclic cleaver into two. And this is a case of, so N is three. So in this way, we get uh, the cleaver. And the, for general N, uh, the result of a Berenstein form in Zerbinski is as follows. So uh, we have a map uh, from, uh, elementary matrices to uh, upper triangle matrix uh, given by this formula. Then its inverse uh, is given by uh, chamber ansatz actually. And so from X, we define uh, some complicated matrix Y in some way, and we take its minor and take ratio. And this is a general case of chamber ansatz. Then actually the way to get Y is explicitly written in this way. So this is, is a map on the 
totally positive uh, upper triangle matrices. And Y is uh, given by this formula. Here, uh, WO uh, is the uh, square matrix corresponds to the longest element. And this T means a transpose. And this plus means uh, you take a uh, upper triangle element in the Gauss decomposition. So, so in this way, in general case, uh, we can write down this one. And good thing is each minus are related to cluster X variables called a uh, twist map or inverse of the twist map. And it is very important map in this setting. Then, uh, for up to now, I am only talk about a case of A type, A n. So in matrix, it is G L n plus one. And but this setting can be generalized to uh, general finite dimensional simple Lie groups, G. So the notion of total positivity was introduced by Rustic. And the notion of minors or twist map or chamber ansatz used in the case of A type is uh, introduced by Berenstein, Berenstein themselves soon after the paper. And so actually their mo the motivation of Lustig and Berenstein Zerbinski was in the very uh, similarity in the uh, canonical basis of quantum group and a totally positive matrices. So they are interested in these topics and only for general G, uh, they constructed very interesting uh, studies. And now, also now it continues. So there are a quantum analog of these things, Swiss to map or chamber ansatz. And it is also a very interesting topic in representation theory. And many uh, people are studying on this topic too. So uh, this is a side of algebra um, based on total positivity. And as the last topic, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, several notions related to cluster algebra um, based on functor surface. So the topics is totally different now, um, but finally it will be related. So let sigma, uh, be an oriented surface of genus G with M, mark, M points. So this P is a set of points on the surface. And uh, we assume the following thing. So if the surface has the boundary for each uh, boundary component, uh, at least uh, there is one point. Uh, we assign this one and we fix uh, the triangulation T of sigma. Uh, it is a, a topological triangulation. So namely, uh, all vertices in triangle uh, should be these points. And uh, for such a triangulation, we can define a dual cleaver to T. So dual means uh, the edge in triangulation is uh, are vertices of the cleaver. So number of edge uh, in triangulation uh, is the same as the number of vertices in the cleaver. So this is a very simple example. So this is a four punctured sphere and we take this triangulation. So it includes four triangles, one, two, and three and four in the other side. And so this shows uh, the dual cleaver to this part. So for each edge, we assign vertices, vertex of the cleaver in white uh, circle. And for each triangle, we draw uh, arrows in this way. So we draw small directed triangle. I, I take anti-clockwise uh, direction. So we also have small triangle. So we, did, we do the same uh, to the two triangles in the other direction. And finally, we get uh, this cleaver. So these green arrows are related to the uh, dual cleaver to the opposite uh, two triangles. So we get this one. So in this way, uh, after we triangulate the surface, we can draw its dual cleaver. 
a nice thing occurs if when we change the triangulation. So this is called the flip. So this is a dual cleaver to the to a triangle. And let's consider the change of triangulation uh, like this. So it's just a change diagonal. Then we draw a dual cleaver to this, like this. So you see that uh, these two cleavers are related to a mutation at this vertex. So this is a very naive uh, discovery, but for geometers, it was very excited. Uh, discovery actually. So, oh, there should be something. Then, uh, actually, uh, this uh, relation is uh, very important to consider a uh, one classification of cluster algebra too. So this is a, a result um, studied by these people that, uh, so the cluster algebra um, is classified to be a so finite mutation type, not a finite type as I explained before. Uh, finite mutation type means that so number of exchange matrices or number of cleavers is finite. So in the previous case, number of cluster variables are finite, but it is a uh, weaker, little bit weaker than and. So if and only if uh, triangulated surface, uh, so if and only if the quiver uh, came from triangulated surface or uh, it is finite one, as I explained, so AD type or uh, some exceptions of finite numbers. So, so the finite mutation type is very restricted type and so this relation is used to classify the cluster algebra in this way. But uh, for today, I'd like to introduce uh, the different story um, by using hyperbolic geometry. So the problem is, what is the root of x and y variables in geometry? Then uh, this is a, a final answer of the dictionary. So. When uh, the surface admits so hyperbolic structure, and so T is an ideal triangulation. Um, actually, I will give a precise notion of ideal triangulation tomorrow, uh, because I have to introduce many uh, things in hyperbolic geometry. So today I omit that. So then uh, we can get uh, this dictionary. Uh, among the notions in cluster algebra and 2G hyperbolic geometry. So uh, for cleaver in cluster algebra, we have triangulation. It is not only for hyperbolic geometry. And so mutation of cleaver is related to flip, as I explained. Then X variables are related to a good coordinate on the triangulation called lambda coordinate introduced by Penner in 1987. And Y variables are related to another good coordinate called shear coordinate. Uh, this shear coordinate, the name was introduced by Thurston, as far as I understand. Then the mutation of X variables are related to Ptolemy relation. Then, uh, roughly speaking, uh, lambda coordinate is a length of uh, edge in triangulation, roughly. And the shear coordinate uh, means a close ratio of four points around the vertex, uh, around the edge. So it means uh, lambda coordinate is roughly a length of this edge with some additional information. And a y, a shear coordinate or y variables are related to, uh, for example, the shear coordinate associated to this edge or this vertex is related to the close ratio of these four points. These uh, things has such a meaning with hyperbolic metric. And with uh, cluster things, we can go further. So actually, uh, the original, so this, this kind of dual cleaver to triangulation uh, is related to the, how to say, usual hyperbolic 
uh, structure described by uh, so PSO2 R. But we can generalize this description to higher rank uh, group. So this is called a higher Pythonal space. And uh, for that, I should introduce some basic notion in Pythonal space in original. So for simplicity, uh, I assume that uh, now surface sigma is the uh, surface of genus G with S inner punctures without boundary. So I assume this condition. And we have a triangulation always. I assume 2G minus 2 plus S is positive. Then uh, we have a triangulation of sigma. And actually, in this case, the number of edges in triangulation is 6G minus 6 plus 3S. It is easy to be calculated by, use, by using Euler number. And it, is, it doesn't depend on the triangulation. So we write E sigma for this number. Then uh, Taishimara space uh, is so given by this uh, formula. So actually, the original definition of the Taihima space is very analytic one. But today, I take an algebraic one So by using representation. So this is a set of faithful representation, PSL2 representation of the fundamental group pi1 of the surface, and with some conditions. And the module, uh, the diagonal action of PSL2 R. So I take this definition today. So the dimension, real dimension of this space is given by this number. And actually this number is less than the number of edges by S. So this is a point. And Penner introduced the decorative Taihimura space, T tilde. So this is uh, the Taihimura space plus S uh, positive real number. Then uh, as a real dimension, the dimension of S, of S tilde is the same as the number of edges. So this is very nice actually. And uh, the good coordinate of this decorative type of space is given by X variables. This is uh, what Penn did. Then uh, actually uh, I will explain the detail of this coordinate tomorrow. And in fact, uh, Hock, uh shows that uh, by using shear coordinate, so another coordinate by variables, we can ex explicitly con construct uh, the representation from pi1 to psl to r combinatorial in the following sense. So actually, this is very interesting map. So let's consider uh, the this kind of triangulation of the surface. This is a, only a snapshot of triangulation. And this gamma is an element in this pi one. So it is a oriented closed curve. And we assume that uh, this curve doesn't touch uh, vertices. And it, is, uh, it should be uh, the simplest one, as simple one as possible. It means that if uh, it goes into some triangle, uh, it goes to right or left simply. So it doesn't return the way. So for such a uh, circle, a path, directed path, uh, we can associate the product of matrices. So if it across uh, this edge with uh, y variables y1, for example, which we multiply this matrix x, y, 1. And because it goes to the right, we multiply r. This is upper triangle matrix. And now it uh, go across edge 3. We multiply, so pro take a product x, y, 3, and so on. So in this way, uh, we go, so by going this circle, so oriented circle, uh, we multiply many, many matrices. And we get the representation depending on the y variables. So this is the realization. And, but the point is at each puncture uh, surrounded by several edges like this, uh, we assign on the condition that the product of these edges is one. 
So because the number of punctures is S, so we should assign S condition, additional condition to Y. Then we can get uh, the good element in the type uh, space in this way. We can reduce S dimension uh, by uh, no, assigning this condition to each part. Spock and Goncharov uh, generalize this structure to higher uh, rank. So this is a higher type mirror theory. So to, for today, I only mentioned uh, the case that G is PSL n plus one. So this is for, uh, again, A pipes. So for this case, we again fix a uh, reduced expression of the longest element in the wide loop. It's the same as before in totally positive magic. Then uh, we get some uh, sequence of, how to say, rank, rank variables. And by following this, uh, we can define a uh, cleaver. And for, we stop here in the case of the total positive matrices, but in geometry, we have to uh, add n vertices more and we get j, j children. So in A1 case, uh, I didn't explain the total positive case. So it is just this blue arrow. So in A2 case, we have this blue cleaver. It's the same as before. So additionally, so we put n vertices. So in this case, we put one and we put two in this case. And we add several arrows by following some blue. Then we get these cleavers. So for triangulation, we assign on um, this or these cleavers in each triangle. And by using this, uh, we can construct the representation of fundamental group uh, in the same way as before. So this is a higher type of theory. Then actually, uh, for simplicity, I take uh, the surface without boundary, but it can be generalized uh, to a border surface, of course. So with so genus G is inner punctures and B boundaries with K marked points at the boundary. So we can generalize uh, in such a case. And in this case, we can do the same game. And actually there are several uh, spaces. And the first one, so L is the generalization of the Python space. This is a, a map, so the representation of pi one uh, by the group G, modular G, and it is called a moduli space of G local system over the surface. This is a generalization of Teichner space. And another one is so P space. Uh, it is uh, L space plus uh, some flat structure around uh, inner punctures and marked points. So, the good coordinate of this space is given by y variables. By assigning the condition as before, we uh, reduce this space to L. And so this space was introduced by Fokker and Goncharov partially, and uh, it became perfect by Goncharov and Shen recently. And another space uh, whose coordinate is given by X uh, is called A space. And this is a higher decorated type of space. This is a generalization of what introduced by Penny. So for uh, uh, geometers, uh, so we are interested in what kind of action, geometrical action on this space uh, is described by cluster mutation, for example. So this uh, problem is, uh, has been studied uh, by several people, including my group. And actually, the wild group action I defined yesterday uh, has a geometrical counterpart to relation between reduced expression and cleaver. Yeah. Ah, I see. So there is a combinatorial tra transformation from the reduced expression to a blue part of the cleaver. It is just a combinatorial one. So, right. ah, here, okay. <laughs> so for, for example, uh, for example, in this case, A, A2 case, 
uh, radius expression is one to one, for example. Then for one uh, in uh, building block, we prepare this quiver for one. And this quiver, uh, sorry, uh, it is wrong. It's the same, I'm sorry. Uh, this, this quiver for two. And for one to one, we uh, just grew these quivers, one, two, one. So by growing these arrows and these arrows, then you get this one. Yeah. In general, we have such a thing also in uh, non simplified case. It was introduced by Fock and Montreal. And this operation is called amalgamation. Oh, time is over now. So, yeah. And so this is the end of my talk. So uh, I introduced uh, two types, as I said, basic notions in two sides. So in algebra and geometry. So tomorrow I, I will explain uh, the part of geometry. So I will add some uh, notions of uh, lambda coordinate tomorrow by using hyperbolic geometry. And I further go to 3D hyperbolic geometry. So thank you very much. Are there any questions? Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, uh, I saw a research project. Yes. The author is interested in zeta functions. Zeta functions. Zeta functions, yes. yes. And, and so uh, he, he, he considers this uh, from the point of view of, uh, of uh, the, the counting, counting things, uh, 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 count, counting zeros or counting intersections. And and uh, and so, because of that, he's he's wondering whether uh, he could he would like to to use cluster algebras to see if uh, uh, anything can interesting can be said using the language of cluster algebras uh, because uh, he sees this as a combinatorial problem of counting things, mm -hmm. and so I'm wondering whether has anything been done in this uh, direction. He's just stating this as a project. But I don't know whether anything has actually been done in this direction. With zeta functions. Yes, with zeta functions. So actually, um, as far as I know, uh, the zeta function so appears as a dialogism function in hyperbolic geometry, but it is only a part of zeta function. So I don't know if data function itself appears in cluster algebra. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. So thank you very much.